Hey everybody, it's Brett here with The Tuning School, and on this Tech Tuesday, I'm accompanied by Josh Hofstra, who's our GM instructor, as well as the sales account manager here at The Tuning School. So Josh, what are we gonna be talking about on this Tech Tuesday? I'm glad you asked. Today we're actually gonna be going over the difference between a factory ECU and an aftermarket ECU, and when we recommend that you should switch to one. So I feel like for most of our watchers at home, they probably know what a factory ECU is, and even if they don't, we'll get into that a little bit, but more importantly, what is an aftermarket ECU and what does it do? So an aftermarket ECU can range anywhere from being a ignition controller to being able to control the entire car, just like your factory ECU does. Um, some of the times where you might have to go to an aftermarket ECU would be where you're doing something more purpose-built. If it's going to be a drag racer or a rock bouncer, or say you're putting an engine in something that it really didn't come in, like maybe a boat, for example, or an airplane, that's when you might want to switch over to something like an aftermarket ECU. Awesome, that's really cool. So now that you've explained the differences between this aftermarket ECU and this factory one, what are some of the benefits? So why would I want the e this ECU here over this one and what makes it better and what can it can do that this one can't? Absolutely, so the best part about a factory ECU is typically they come with your factory vehicle. So it's used to locking the car, rolling the windows down, operating the radio, that's gonna be handled by the BCM. The PCM will still handle the same fuel, air and spark that an aftermarket standalone will. But the difference is that this has a lot more strategies involved. So you can do boost control strategies, traction control strategies, power management. There are a ton of features that an aftermarket standalone has compared to a factory ECU that necessarily aren't available because of the restrictions of power, mm. the type of vehicle it is, or what you put an engine into. So like a swap per se. I gotcha. So this is gonna be limited as far as what its capabilities are at certain power levels, it sounds like, and certain applications versus this. So what are some applications that you're gonna find a standalone ECU? Like what are common applications for this particular unit? So what I've typically seen aftermarket ECUs put in are purpose-built vehicles. So things like half mile cars, mile cars, I've seen it in drag boats. I've seen it in rock bouncers. Um, basically anything that is purpose driven. So they want to be the fastest. They want to have the quickest lap time. They want to have as much data as possible and have control over as many functions as they can. That's when an aftermarket ECU comes into play the most. I got you. So if you're trying to build a sick cruiser to go around to the car shows on a Saturday night, an aftermarket ECU might not be the best for you, unless you want your cruiser to pop off really fast mile passes after exactly. the car show, exactly. then I guess that would be your application. So you kind of have to look at, are we looking at full race versus something a little bit different, maybe a little bit more streetable, right? Absolutely. So at what power level would you say the difference really comes in? Because that's what the people at home really want to know, right? Absolutely. If I'm on YouTube right now, I'm going, well, tell me how much horsepower I need to use a standalone at. I've heard that question a lot. So in your opinion, what is the normal power level where you're going to find that you need to go to the standalone? So other than swap vehicles, which swap vehicles, you can take an engine, LS engine, and put it in pretty much anything at any power level, and I'd recommend using an aftermarket ECU. For racing, I would typically look around the 1,000 horsepower mark. That's where, as you can see over here, we kind of run out of a lot of data in some of these tables. You can see we've maxed out our injector table, we've maxed out our mass airflow frequency table. Um, that doesn't necessarily happen inside of an aftermarket ECU since you have a lot more options with sensors. You can put a five bar map sensor and a seven bar map sensor. You can set up whatever configurations of sensors you need for traction control strategies. You can put a drive shaft collar on your car with a vehicle wheel speed sensor on the front and set it up to manage whatever power level you want. Gotcha, so roughly what horsepower would you say that this factory computer is no longer good at? Uh, I've personally made over 1400 wheel horsepower using a factory ECU, but with that being said, the car had no traction control. The car was very laggy coming off the line because it had two large precision turbochargers on it. Um, and that's when we actually made the switch over to an aftermarket ECU like a Pro EFI 128. That's actually what we ended up using with a menagerie of different sensors to be able to have a much better outcome. And in turn, the car ran a lot better. It was a lot more efficient. I got you. So you can get it done on this factory ECU, exactly. but uh, the standalone is going to make it a lot easier. And in the end, it sounded like it made it a lot faster as well. Yes. Everything was more efficient. That makes a lot of sense. So you would say probably what, around a thousand horsepower, you're going to need to go to that standalone. And those Absolutely. are going to be your race applications. I don't know many cars at the car show that actually have a thousand horsepower. Correct. So yeah, that makes perfect sense. So what is the difference between tuning these two? So 
Obviously, you know, the people watching at home, if they're customers of ours, they may know a little bit about tuning a factory ECU, or they may not. Mm -hmm. But what's the difference when tuning a standalone? Like, where does that really come into play? Yeah, so the difference between a factory and aftermarket standalone when it comes to the actual tuner himself, I have come to notice that a lot of people, when they try to attempt doing a standalone, don't necessarily understand the difference um, between the electronics uh, components. They don't know what the different zero to five volt values are in certain sensors, things like that. That's all knowledge that's gathered over years and years and years of doing this every single day that a lot of aftermarket standalone tuners have. And it's highly recommended if you are going to buy one of these aftermarket units that you find a tuner in your area that understands that. The best part about a factory PCM is you can attend one of our live seminars, you can come to a beginner's class or an advanced class and learn pretty much everything you're gonna need to know to be able to tune this ECU out to the best of its capabilities. Absolutely, so it sounds like it's a little bit more involved in the setup, like you are saying, as far as knowing the sensors and their readings and their outputs, and you need a little bit more of that information where you don't need that on this, but it sounds like the strategies themselves, like exactly. fuel and spark might be easier on this than this one. So it sounds like it's a little bit pros and cons one way or the other as far as tuning it goes. And a lot of times what I see is people that tune OEMs think that tuning a standalone is hard. People that right. tune standalones exactly. think tuning an OEM is hard. So it, it's kind of, I guess, comes down to what you're used to and what you've been trained up in. So Absolutely. that makes a lot of sense. Well, that's perfect information, Josh. We appreciate that. Hopefully you guys at home were able to learn something from it and you're able to now decide exactly how you wanna build your car. If you want more information on how to tune a factory ECU or a standalone, head over to thetuningschool.com and in this video, go to the comments below, tell us what your favorite standalone ECU is and why it's your favorite. For more knowledge like this, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as our social media outlets and as always, stay tuned.